Yeah. When I'm about to speak, you're going to hear this. Okay, that means I'm going to speak. Oh, this is going to be it's going to be annoying. That means silent. Do you understand what that means? All right, if you can get the opening in one take, I'll be silent. I'll do it in one take. You ready? Okay, because okay, you haven't been able to. All right, here we go. And in three, two, one. Yippee ki mother. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to Yippee ki mother podcast classic. I'm Ralph Quartrucci. I'm Sean Paul Murphy. I'm Deborah Murphy. I'm John Quattrucci. I'm Chris Coker. And I've been thinking all week about what John's glasses remind me of. I figured it out. It's Menachem Begin. Oh, that's a that's <laughs> a an interesting look. poll. All right, it's a good luck. Well, oi. Okay. Well, oi. that's. I don't even know how to start. Okay. So, uh, Drew, you're never ever going to use your name again. Is that is that what we're going with now? I don't know. Oh. I feel like everybody who needs to know knows. Well, that's true, but we may get some new viewers, but that's up to you. All right. I know Sean's not ready, but let's go. Let's do a little round of what you watch. Let's start with Chris Coker. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I actually rewatched the, I think it's 2005 film, Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves. Fun. Uh, I love that film. Because I, I saw recently that uh, it looks like they may be making a sequel after right. 17 years. Yep. Um you know, the film itself was okay. You know, I remember seeing it in the theater and enjoying it. Um, mostly, uh, partially due to the, um, all of the supporting actors in there. Um, Tilda Swinton is in there and she just has that great kind of, uh, androgynous look, uh, as the wow. Archangel Gabriel, I think it was. And then, um, uh, Peter Stormare was, uh, was Lucifer. And uh, anyway, basically, uh, it's pretty good. So I'm excited about a possible sequel. I actually own, I bought it because it was the easiest, cheapest way to get it. Uh, the DC comic or CW version called Constantine also. It's funny, they, they can never really use the real title of the comic book, which is Hellblazer. It's a little too close to Hellraiser, I think. Um, but also, it's, uh, it's very... Um, well, it has hell in the title, and I think that would scare off a lot of people. Um, but anyway, um, I like that series. It's pretty good. I'm actually finishing it up. Um, I bought it during the pandemic when I was uh, kind Wait, of the really... The series of books, or have you seen... There's a TV show No, it's as a, well. the TV show. Is, okay. um, I've read a lot of the Constantine comics, at least all that the Baltimore County Library had available. Um, I really, I really hit the library pretty hard during the pandemic. It was, it was really a crutch for me. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, I enjoyed the movie. I'm looking forward to a sequel, which actually makes kind of sense. As I know, I've mentioned the Sandman a couple of times on here, and uh, the John Constantine character shows up in Sandman, um, but in in this version, it's Joanna Constantine, um, who played by uh, Olivia Coleman, not Olivia Coleman, but uh, one Jenna of the, Coleman. Jenna Coleman. Thank you. Yeah. One of the companions. Doctor from, Who from Doctor Who, yeah. and she's fantastic in it. And at first I thought it was a little odd that, you know, Joanna Constantine is a character and she's basically playing both like her granddaughter and her great grandmother or something like that. You know, she's playing the same, uh, not the same character, but two, you know, multiple generations removed. <clears throat> and I thought it was, pardon me, a little weird that they just made her a woman uh, instead of John Constantine. But if they're doing a movie, that makes perfect sense. They might be, uh, they might not have either access to that character or they're like, hey, we don't want to, we're going to do something with Constantine. We don't want to mix it up. Uh, that's always a possibility. It's, um, but anyway, they, that's what I've been watching. They, they were going to reboot Constantine with, with a, a different actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy who just took over Warner Brothers uh, brought Keanu Reeves back into it. Oh, cool. That's, how, that's what happened. David yeah. Zaslav. Yeah. My boss. Yeah, and Keanu oh, right. Reeves was into it because he really he likes the movie Constantine. He likes it a lot. It's, they also brought back his Francis Lawrence. Have really gone up. Oh, the director. Yeah, which yeah. makes me think it'll probably be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Constantine. Be good. All right, Drew, what do you watch? Well, uh, I watched uh, a movie called Good Night, Mommy, um, the remake of the 2014 film from Austria. This one came out this year, starring Naomi Watts. Um, it was pretty faithful to the plot of the movie in which um, a mother has twin boys and 
she has some kind of operation and she has to wear a mask over her face and her kids start to suspect that maybe it's not her. And the first version was very brutal and violent and I thought it was okay. And this version is a lot less brutal and a lot less violent. And I guess I didn't really like either of them that much because I didn't even remember the big twist from eight years ago. <laughs> and then when I saw it, I didn't care. So I like Naomi Watts a lot, but she's been making a lot of, um, this is like her sixth or seventh remake of a foreign film. Um, and it's, I think, the second movie she's made where she gets tortured um, by Austrian, um, in an Austrian remake, because the first one was Funny Games, the Michael Haneke movie, which I haven't, I saw I saw uh, Funny Games, which is insane, and I have not seen the remake, and I'm, I'm fine with that. And then I actually went to the movies, and I saw a movie that, um, like tonight's selection, is also uh, historical fiction. Um, it didn't compare well, just because it's hard to follow RRR. But we saw The Woman King, mm. and uh, that's the Viola Davis movie about the Amazons of Dahomey. And um, it's just as a movie, it, it wants to be Braveheart, Gladiator, that sort of thing. It's, as a movie, okay. There's some really good performances in it. Viola Davis is great. Lashana Lynch is great. But as history, it's kind of nonsense because the Kingdom of Dahomey was built on slavery and the Amazons of Dahomey were a big part of conquering uh, neighboring communities and then uh, capturing uh uh, men and women to be sacrificed religiously and then to be sold. And the the premise of the movie is that the leader of the Amazons wants, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. Oh. And I mean, there's some real people like Gezo is the king played by John Boyega. And he, he in the movie is considering stopping it. But in real life, he actually killed his brother who was thinking about stopping it. But, um, I, I don't think it makes the movie bad as a movie, but it it's history that I mean, I actually studied that history and I was very curious to see what they do with it. And what they did with it was kind of pretend that's not what the history is, which isn't in and of itself bad. I mean, Braveheart is straight nonsense as far as history goes, but it's a really exciting movie. And this just wasn't as exciting. So I think it's designed to be an Oscar contender of some kind. I don't know if it'll <laughs> get there or not, but um, it did well this weekend. It was the number one movie. So the woman King. Wow. Okay. I saw a trailer for boycott that. thing on that on Twitter. Yeah. It's boycott. getting, it's getting blasted for what you were talking about, Drew. Well, I mean, you know, th these are people who are passionately against the movie when they never even heard of Diome 10 minutes before they started tweeting about it. So it's a little silly that all of a sudden there's these passionate people who want to preserve the history of West African kingdoms that fell to colonialism. I mean, like, it's the same kind of people that say, well, you know, slavery only happened because the black people in Africa sold the slaves. It's like, well, so what? What kind of weird what about thing is that? Like, if it's not historically accurate, I think that's worth pointing out. That doesn't make it a better or worse movie because as a movie, it's just OK. But people always find something to freak out about. And so this is the woman king this week and it'll be something else next week. Now, wait a minute. Because, Are you saying in Braveheart? Yeah. That William Wallace didn't really sleep with the Queen of England. Well, it's not just that. I mean, he was a furry little troll man. There's no yeah. way he was Mel Gibson sexy time. Um, and a lot of the depiction of it. But you know, you know, but who cares? Because it's a thrilling movie. I mean, the the movie we're gonna talk about tonight is also historical fiction. I love historical well, you know, fiction. One thing I presented about the Patriot, which you oh, know that's terrible. Is that they made the guy Tarleton, who was like the horrible villain, mm -hmm. like very British, but in real life, the guy was. Well, I'm telling uh -oh. you, who's the main villain? It's sort of like, gee, I know we want to make the British look bad. This guy was really an American, you know, just fighting for the British. Well, I think the you movie know, so. tonight we're going to talk about had a take on the british so that's interesting especially well, now made, and you made the patriot look like the british were all great uh, guys i know but okay well, all right uh john what'd you watch uh i watched uh oh first of all i watched 60 minutes last night and i am super excited to announce to all our fans out there that the pandemic is over so I am extremely excited about that. And so inflation give us, isn't happening. Yeah, give us a like. 
Well, no, uh, inflation's up an inch, but I don't want to get into that. It's funny. I thought we don't talk about politics. I thought we don't talk about politics. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the pandemic. I'm I'm super excited about that. You're a hypocrite. So what'd you watch? Here's the reason. Here's the reason. Here's what I watch. So um, (laughs) don't do that. I'm a big Casablanca fan, obviously. And um, a a movie came out right after it called Passage to Marseille, basically with the same cast, starring, uh, directed by Michael Curtiz, starring Humphrey Bogart, Sidney Greenstreet, Peter Lorre, Claude Rains. I've never seen it before, so I watched it. It's a it's a really interesting movie about uh, Devil Island's escapees who end up on a boat uh, because they want to fight for the French resistance because Germany is about to take over France, um, and it's it's that whole thing. Um, it was it was interesting because what I didn't realize about it it wasn't really straight storytelling. They had flashbacks within flashbacks. Uh, so that far ago, I don't remember ever seeing anything like that. Uh, Humphrey Bogart was really good in the movie. He wasn't playing Rick from Casablanca. Um, and and spoilers, uh, he gets killed at the end, which was really surprising. And there was a subplot where um, they talk about he got arrested. That's how he ended up on Devil's Island. Mistakenly arrested. He, he was innocent. Uh, but he, he married a woman who had a, had a child while Humphrey Bogart was away. So Humphrey Bogart's never met his child. But when he went on bombing runs with the with the French uh, military, he would drop um, a canister with a message to the wife and child. He constantly did that. And the last time he wasn't able to do it because he got shot over it. It was kind of strange. That you, so they, uh, he never had any scenes with the, with the boy. Yeah, it was really it was really interesting. But I think if you like Casablanca, uh, you'll like this. Green Street was the bad guy and he was really good. The captain of the ship. I don't know the actor's name. I really liked him in this. And I really liked Humphrey Bogart. So again, if you like uh, Bogart, 1944, Passage to Marseille. Check it out. Also, I'd recommend uh, Across the Pacific, another one that had Sydney Green Street. Yeah, they're playing that now, too. I haven't seen that. I'm going to watch that, too. Oh, but talking about the flashback in the flashback, that was one thing I liked about the movie Deadpool. Yeah. We're in a flashback, and then they go into another flashback. <laughs> he looks right at the camera and goes, yeah, we're going for, we're going from a flashback into another flashback. So they were very proud to point that out. Uh, is that what you watch on Deadpool? Is that it? You done? No, I, Debbie, what the, one thing I watched was <laughs> this is the end. I don't know oh. if you ever saw it. Oh, that's is that fun. the one with all the actors in LA yeah. getting the end of the yeah, world. It's the apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. And you know, they all play themselves. And somehow I'm, I'm watching, I think the film's hilarious. It's so somehow good. watching them, I think that really is them too. I don't I think there's much right. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, it seemed like it was improv, right? The whole thing yeah. seemed like it was one big improv. Well, they yeah, were playing, I, 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 you know, I think they I were playing. I found vanity and everything just hilarious. Yeah. They were playing, um, you know, heightened versions of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what fun. we That's see a is little, themselves. A little higher. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a comedian named Joe, Joe Coy. Joe Coy. Oh, does he have oh, a new oh special? God, he's so funny. He's a Filipino. And I work with a lot of Filipinos in my, you know, my job, my blood bank job. But, um, you know, they're usually nurses, doctors, or med techs. And this guy really has a funny bit where where he talks about the, he's just such a funny guy because Filipinos are known for joking around, singing, having all these talents, and then seriously medicine, you know, it's it's amazing how he got it right. Where is he, where is it playing? Netflix. Netflix. Joe Coy, K-O-Y. Okay. And very funny. You thought Hilarious. it was really funny. Okay. This is the end also. No, that's on um yeah, Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, how that's, that's a that's fun. how long has that been? That's that's an old it's movie. Be how, six, you know. seven years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Isn't I saw Natalie the Portman in that? Doesn't she kick ass in that movie? Natalie Portman. No, it's a uh, girl no. from Harry Potter. What's Emma Watson. Yeah, the other one. It's uh, Emma Watson. Oh, Emma, oh, Emma Watson. Watson. I shouldn't say girl, the woman. And She's then uh, Channing, Channing Tatum, Tatum becomes has a, a bitch great, dog or something. Yeah, Somebody he's becomes a great a bitch cameo. Dog. I love him. So <laughs> There's funny. a lot of great cameo. Like I'm going to be dumbing. <clears throat> I love Michael Sarah plays like this completely drugged out, right, raging a hole. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hilarious. I really I really recommend the film. Of course, now we shouldn't be watching um, uh, Franco, but. Um, you can watch everybody else in it. Yeah, we can watch yeah, everyone else. Yeah, that's a else. tough call. That's, we're starting to lose a lot of people with that. 
Um, all right, I saw two things. Franco was asking for it, though, with what he did. Who was Franco? Yeah, definitely was. What did yeah. he do? I'm, I'm not. Franco, hit the main complaint about him is he started teaching an acting class on how to do sex scenes. <laughs> Like, I mean, it's weirdly genius, and, and but like, sick at the same time. <laughs> it's yeah. like, because because so, these these women trust it was like him. So he could touch it's all these women. Franklin. It's awful what he was doing. Well, perfect rehearsal means perfect performance. Just remember that. <laughs> okay, that's what Cal Ripken Senior right. said about practice. Yeah. All right, I saw yeah. two things, and since John brought up politics, I'll throw the first one out. I saw Trump's uh, cult like uh, thing he did in Ohio with the strange music and the. The number one salutes. It was just awesome. I'm sure, John, you caught that on one of your channels. No. Uh, uh, did he have a scary red background like Hitler? Okay. Yeah. Like mine. I'm going bad Biden. Oh, I'm you know what? Biden now too. that you mention it. <laughs> I'm going dark Biden. Yours, no, is, I went, yours, is, yours is more like Amsterdam. Right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I went to the movies <clears throat> and I saw yeah, the, yeah. the new horror film called Barbarian. Oh, how is that? that? It's very good, and a couple interesting things I want to talk about. One is it's a great horror movie. It stars um, Bill Skarsgård, Bill Skarsgård, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Georgina Campbell, Justin Long. I don't want to give – if I give anything, I give away the plot, but it basically she plays a woman who comes up to a door, an Airbnb in a, in a rundown neighborhood in Detroit. Bill Skarsgård happens to be also renting the Airbnb at the same time. So is this interplay between should she go in and stay with him for one night? She's got a job interview the next day, and then all kinds of things happen. But the interesting part of the film, the interesting thing about the film is it's directed by a guy named Zach Kreger. And I'm friends with Zach's brother, Jake Kreger, who I do some work for. And j z I'm trying to get Zach to come on the podcast what? to talk about Barbarian. Uh, I'm working through great. his brother, Jake. Nice. Uh, I did an infomercial at Jake's mother's house a long time ago. So I have a relationship with these guys. I didn't realize they were brothers until I went home and Googled uh, Zach's name and realized he had a brother, Jake, and I immediately texted Jake. But the film is fantastic. So if he comes on, I suggest everybody has to go watch it or figure out. I don't know if it's, I don't even think it's streaming. Is it streaming? Right now. I don't no. think so. In theaters. Um, but it's a pretty decent horror movie, and um, it's got a lot of subtext that's uh, kind of fascinating, and it's a lot of fun. And it was written and directed by by Zach, um, and I think he did a pretty good job. And Justin Long is fantastic in it. Um, Justin Long was so. a good. For and can I can I say I think it's really great that Detroit as a city imploded so that we can do all these horror movies like it follows and don't breathe and all the stuff because otherwise we'd have to go to bulgaria or romania or we Baltimore. can just keep it here they really they really yeah. play on the detroit it's amazing uh, yeah it's, it's amazing it's, yeah it's it's wild it's wild and uh yeah detroit's a big part of this movie so all right now to drew's film he had never seen i don't think any of us had seen this one um drew what'd you bring so uh, what I brought is a movie I've been looking forward to seeing for quite a while. It's called RRR. It's an Indian movie. It's a Tollywood movie. It's not Bollywood. Bollywood is the um, Indian movie industry out of Mumbai. And Tollywood, there's actually two Tollywoods, but the I think the more well-known Tollywood is uh, the one that made this movie. Uh, it's not in Hindi. It's in Telugu. But the movie is uh, done in, I think, five different languages the version that's on netflix is a hindi dub with um the english character speaking english and the indian character sometimes speaking english to the english characters it doesn't matter because this movie is so fucking awesome i can't believe how incredibly entertaining this movie is and it was only three hours and seven minutes so you're welcome you had 20 more minutes to spend this week than you did with seven samurai and this movie is i think you can talk about it on a bunch of different levels and i look forward to talking about it with you guys and hearing about it from you guys but the basic premise of the movie uh, as i said it's a it's a historical fiction there's two um, figures from uh, indian history and indian revolutionary anti-colonial history and the premise of the movie is that um what if they met they never met in real life 
there is a period of time where we don't really know where they are. And so that's sort of the, and maybe they met in this period of time. Uh, it would be like, if you said, I'm going to make a movie with John Brown and George Washington, like they're real people, but they didn't meet. And it's a kind of historical, um, I guess just play that you have in something like Inglorious Bastards, where you know that's or Abraham not Lincoln thing. Vampire Slayer. Right, exactly. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which is a, a very underrated movie. But um, this movie is essentially uh, about uh, these two men. One of them um, is trying to rescue a girl who was stolen from uh, her village by a British colonial governor and his uh, wife. And uh, he is... Uh, brought into friendship and then conflict with the other main character who is uh, I, I think it's Indian special police. It's it, I'm not really familiar with if it's more police or more army, but essentially he's an Indian who works for the British in a military capacity. So he's charged with hunting down um, the other character, but they've never met. So they actually become friends first. And this movie is just the most joyful, exuberant, um, insane Violent fun, violent, crazy movie I've seen in a long time. And uh, I loved it. If I uh, had the chance, I'd watch it again. Um, and again, and, and probably again. Mildly. <clears throat> I, I watched the first half the first night, right? And I was, oh my God, the size of this spider that's walking in front of me is insane. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Well, I've told—I mean, I've told people that they should watch this movie, what? and they—if they, they think about the runtime, I say it has actually a natural break in the movie. It, yes. I mean, that wasn't actually an intermission in the theatrical. Well, that's, a, that's a question. But I said the thing about the movie is that, like, the right before the intermission, there's a scene that's so gigantic and spectacular. You're like, I think this is the end of the movie, and not only is it not the end of the movie, it's fantastic that it's not the end of the movie. Yeah. So there okay, is a so natural place not... to break it up. We did not see the intermission in the show. It just went from one scene. Right. In the, in the Netflix version, it doesn't stop for five okay, minutes. Because in that India, graphic... I guess, they have what they call intervals, which are intermissions. Right. Right. Yes. So that's where I ended the first night was after that scene, right? You're talking about with all you the animals. You can say what That's scene. the one, right? It's all, where all the animals, the, uh, the party scene. Yeah. Okay. I almost gave up on the film. I'm like Jesus. The rest of the film is like this. I well, I because I kind of <laughs> liked it, but I was still a little bit. I am so glad I picked it up the next night and finished it because I p totally bought into what was going on. I totally just let myself go, and by the end of it, with all the crazy shit that was going on and those what those two guys were pulling off through the whole thing, I was invested and wanted to see it all the way, play it all the way through. And I watched that whole music video they do at the end, which is, I guess is a song about the two revolutionary guys and they're explaining yeah, the history mm -hmm. of the film, right? Mm -hmm. It was just so like fun. Doodle dandy. Jo joyous is the right word. And I was shocked to see Ray Stevenson as the, the colonel, I guess. And the mm -hmm. woman is from Indiana Jones. That's the... Yeah, that's you, more shocking. Allison right. Doody. She from played the Allison Doody? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That wow. was, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, but at... at the two guys just were in the John Belushi looking dude. All I could see was John Belushi with the, the, the guy really? with the beard. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's back up on that a second, yeah. because the one thing that we don't like, I don't know that much about Indian movies in yeah, general, nothing, nothing, but those, those two actors, it's uh NTR junior. And um, I'm looking at his name, Ram Charan. Those are basically the biggest stars in Tollywood. They're gigantic box office stars. You they make a ton why. of money. Yeah. Yeah, they're absolutely magnetic. They look like and feel like movie stars. But this movie is so big because they had never done a movie before. And the the RRR originally was just a like a placeholder title and it stood for um, you know, Rise, NTR, War, R and Ram and then Rajanuli the director oh, and they decided oh. to just call it that. It would be like if you made a movie with like I don't know, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt and um uh well, steven spielberg and you just called it like you know cps or something and everybody would know what you're talking about so the those two guys are gigantic stars and you can see in every possible way why they are wait did you say that well, i thought i heard you say this was their first movie no this is not... their first movie together these guys oh, have okay, been okay, uh, gotcha. a force in the industry for a long time so gotcha. just the fact that they were making a movie together was a big event. Never mind that it's the most expensive Indian movie ever made. It's one of the most million, successful right? movies ever made. Yeah. It, it's, wow. And it's all, it's definitely all, it's on, all the on the screen. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah.
All it, it reminded me of sort of like one of those team up where you get with like Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, except these guys are more younger and more magnetic, you know? Well, I, it's like I, you could tell they were big stars yeah, and they had I, movie star charisma and here they were, you know, like Clark well, Gable. And I, I won't lie crazy. when they, when they meet under the bridge, when they rescue the boy and yeah. they grasp hands, it is just like Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger grabbing each other at the beginning of Predator. And their yeah. muscles bulging. It's like very, well, they, it's yeah, very yeah. male. Except that that movie leads to tension between those men, and this movie leads to love and friendship. And uh, they and had a bromance. Tension. That was so, a bromance they had. It That's was. a big. This is a big bromance movie. Yeah, and yeah. they, the, 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 what I was going to say, the emotion and the sappiness. They no shame. They had no shame about what they're showing on the screen, which is just it's melodrama. Yes, that's right. Well, I mean, it's it's no, it's I mean, that, that's not usually what Americans are into, but no. it's it's I, I bought into the whole thing. Yeah. What little I've <laughs> seen of Bollywood movies, and I know this is not Bollywood mm -hmm. is big emotion. You yes. know, yeah. lots of color, lots of action, lots of movement, lots of dancing, you know, mm -hmm. and talk about we were talking about this before on the nose songs too. Well, yeah. <laughs> explaining the whole plot sure. yeah right it's yeah. slum slumdog millionaire i haven't seen the whole thing but don't they do a big dance at the end of that one too yes that, that <laughs> why is, are you uh, laughing they're doing bollywood a big style dance. indian style it, no. bollywood it's because you pronounce that. because you pronounce millionaire like the indian host of the show who wants what to a, be a millionaire is that what i said millionaire, millionaire. but the movie's actually he, he slumdog spent three millionaire. hours in this movie it's easy nope, to get nope. the phone for him <laughs> guys, gonna have to hit, drop a sound effect on you guys chris did you like this movie uh, yeah i really enjoyed it i mean almost from a i mean i think um i think he's a little too uh influenced by um zach snyder but you know <laughs> yeah. ends the rapey um uh you know uh and the super graphic violence um it was funny because I, I started watching this film and you know, it looks great. Everything looks great. The two guys, like you said, they're truly movie stars. Uh, you can just see it the, beaming off of them. And, uh, but at the same time, I was like, you know, this movie would like, and I don't, and I, I don't think I'm exaggerating here. If you cut out just half of the slow-mo in this movie, <laughs> just regular speed, it would be 20 minutes shorter. I mean, there's yeah. like legitimately 45 minutes of slow-mo in this film. Um, yeah point being but it's still it's you know that's where i kind of and it had that kind of you know zach snyder did all that kind of heightened action with spartans fl almost flying through the air and you know and all that kind of stuff but what i really enjoyed about this film was the fact that it was just unabashedly like of its culture like it is truly like it's super pro Indian. It's, you know what? Our guys are the best dancers. You guys suck. Your women are going to love us because we're awesome. And, you know, it was just 100% pro unabashedly loving themselves. And I think that's fantastic. It is a, it's like a movie from their culture. And it's, it's cause I haven't seen a lot of Indians, uh, Indian films either, you know, and like, but it was just so unabashedly like, were awesome and then like that dance scene in the middle and it was just like huge and it was just got bigger and bigger and bigger and then it's kind of this dance off scene and it just was great um but but like you said I, but then it's like oh and by the way the guy that you thought is actually working for the for the man as it were is Twice. not he's actually you know undercover to get more guns so they can fight back now the one thing that i did did find a little weird about the film and of course i have very little knowledge of indian history as a general rule especially um you know i mean i know a little bit about them as uh, you know being ruled by great britain and all that kind of stuff in the east india company but um the whole idea that like it's funny this movie is so violent it's so full of action and revolt and anger and everything and it it kind of made me just chuckle a little bit inside because i was like but in the end they won through peaceful nonviolence, you know, that's how they ended up kind of getting rid of Great Britain, you know, with Gandhi and things like that. So, but at the same time, it, you know, it celebrates a part of their history that I had zero idea about, especially when you look at that ending sequence and they're obviously paying homage to, right. you yeah, know, they're bringing up these images of people who I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know who they are, right. but it's, they're probably like the equivalent of their george washington and their founding fathers and obviously from different time periods you can just tell that by their dress but it was still 
Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was it's one of those ones where I actually found myself on Netflix like clicking the more like this button to see what else might be kind of fun and crazy to watch, you know. I got to believe this is one of a kind. This thing was just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It really I, I, But it was like but at the same time it was just it's, you know, it was just really cool. Um yeah, it's and and like you said it it just had that kind of uh you know, it had that Zack Snyder feel to me, but like I said just a little less uh a little less graphic you know there wasn't as much like you know well it got you know that first scene where they where the colonel what's the who's the Brent, the main guy we starts talking the about the bullet how well, much a bullet costs the governor oh yeah, the governor. yeah yeah and he does Ray that Stevenson. speech about don't waste the bullet on her mm -hmm. the mother of and then that guy picks up that tree limb and smacks her across the head oh, and that's yeah. how this awful. movie's starting it's like what is going on uh, but, but, was thinking Maybe we could show this to the grandkids. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, probably <laughs> not. A little I think it was, it was rated PG-13, right? I think that's what it was rated. It should have been rated R. I agree. R. 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 But it wasn't. It should have been. I agree with that. John, it did you enjoy the film? Yeah, you know, I thought I, I did think it was too long because um, oh, I watched it in one sitting. Have but enough. yeah, you know, uh, I've never seen an Indian movie. So um, I've always said that on this show that I love seeing something in some place I've never seen before. And I've never seen anything like that. I mean, the the setting of, of the uh, movie, all those people. I, this was a movie as I was watching it. I did enjoy it, but. I really wanted to see the making of this movie because I wanted to know how they did some of the stuff that they did. Um, and then when you, you, you all this action, all this pathos, and then they break into a show tune. And I was like, that just caught me completely off guard. And the dancing was like phenomenal. Those two guys doing the dancing. I was like, wow, look at these guys dancing. And that was hardcore what they were doing. And then at the end too, I, I liked the dance number at the end. Um, I, I, it was over the top and crazy. And if you like that kind of thing, you'll like this movie. Um, the two actors were absolutely magnetic. Um, the, the guy that played the cop, I, I, I was a little more impressed with. I, I really thought he was great in this movie and such a presence that he had. He smoldered. Yeah, he really Amazing. did. And um, I mean, listen, you know, it's in this type of movie, the damage that these two men sustain and are able to still do stuff is pretty incredible, especially with the cat and nine tails with the hooks on them and stuff. Well, and one guy, took, one guy took a claw to the heart. <laughs> yeah, right. So that was a little, you well, know, they put my, the powder on the uh, ragu. Yeah, yeah. He had a root. Yeah. He had a root that he rubbed on it. Oh, that um, but I did, uh, like I said, it's it's something I've, I have never seen before. I actually knew about this because I I watched the Critical Drinkers podcast, and he actually talked about this movie before you you picked it. So I watched him talking about it, and you know he had his criticism of it, but he said this is the best movie that nobody's watching. So I I I, I think if if you want a good time, it, it is long, and I think you're probably better off like what Ralph did. Watch it in two sittings. I think that might be better for you. That definitely um, but, helped. I I would. I don't I think it. I would have I mean, made it all the way through if I. Yeah, didn't. I mean, and it was I, tough. I, I'm was, glad I did. There were sections. Because, it was tough to get through. Now I can't believe um, you, you Star Wars nerds haven't like hit all the Star Wars themes in this thing and right well, down to the motorcycle, <laughs> the, the evil empire, yeah. right down to that motorcycle going through the tiny little window to take out all the TNT and 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 some of the relationships. It's a Star Wars movie. Well, you could also about. you could also make the you know you could make the claim that Star Wars is you know I mean Joseph Campbell said that Star Wars is based on the monomyth, and even later George Lucas admitted. I, I understand, that, but but right down know. to a some kind oh, of yeah, weapon going through a tiny that. window to to explode the whole sure. evil empire, and yeah. they really made the, the Brits were the you know I think the I think they told us what they thought of the Brits in this one. Or the well, British they were Empire. sympathetic British to the Empire. one, the one woman that befriended mm -hmm. him. Well, because she was, so it wasn't all Darth Vader, but and she reminded me of Princess Diana. You know, she sort of like uh, used the same kind of phraseology that Diana used to, uh, how she used to speak. But one thing I loved about the the narrative of the guy who was the village protector, I just loved that part. It just like endeared you to him. The not so handsome brother you know if they're two brothers um so he was more like the manly uh guy and the other the, the police uh, officer was more so handsome oh my gosh he was so good looking and had skills you know to protect i mean to really 
survive that initial scene to go get them. with all, I know, all those was, people i mean that was crazy oh my gosh i said like, how does this happen is he superman or what but well, he, he should have left over the fence well, like and, and this, the other guy outran a tiger and a wolf right and that actually, scene was great yeah. too that was a great took scene. A, claw, also, a tiger claw directly scenes. into the chest also, i mean well yeah. also you don't even you don't even realize at the time you think they're hunting right. Right. something to eat it and they're actually setting up the last right. scene before the intermission <laughs> they're capturing the, the animals it's just the 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 party that's a little more violent than the first party than the dance party. <laughs> yeah, the dance. I, party. I I I mean I loved watching this movie and I watched it with my wife Kelly and Kelly had a had an absolute blast with it and she said she had another layer of fun watching me watch it because I was so into it <laughs> and uh, it's funny you mentioned Zack Snyder. This movie reminded me in terms of its tone of um I can see the Zack Snyder thing, especially with the slow motion, which I really thought was going to bother me for the first few minutes of the movie. And then I stopped caring because I was so into it. But uh, it reminded me of Stephen Chow, who did Kung Fu Hustle. Oh, yeah. Which mm -hmm. is a completely like zany, crazy, creative action movie that you can't pull off without the athleticism and the stunts and the and the craft of filmmaking and stuff. So this seemed like it was come from that. But uh, Kelly said, this is, a, I think, a great observation. I don't know if you guys ever watched The Grinder. It was a Rob Lowe comedy yeah. show that was on Fred for one Savage. season. Fred Savage right? was in it. Yeah. Absolutely hysterical show. But he's got essentially a catchphrase where somebody, because he's he used to do be a lawyer on television, and now he's a lawyer back with his family's practice, and it's just <laughs> the whole thing is it's so funny and ridiculous. But somebody will, will say something like, oh, there's no way that'll ever happen. And Rob Lowe will stop and the camera will go in on him and he'll go, yeah, but what if it did? And Kelly said, that's got to be the conversations that they had about making this movie because everything that they did was just the craziest versions of things. I well, mean, I was like time, at the losing end. my mind when they're rescuing the kid and they're jumping around with they're talking okay. to each other with hand signals. I mean, like the whole well, thing was crazy. They set that whole um, piggyback thing during yeah, their bromance yes, where they're, that's right. the two of them were just giving each other piggy with a one piggyback. Yeah. So at the end, when they do that scene and the guy's on his back and the other guy is loading the guns as the other guy right. is oh, so amazing <laughs> guns and climbing the tower. Don't forget climbing the tower. That's what I mean, the flip on the, t by that time I was like, okay, I don't care what they do. I'm buying all of it yeah. because it's just so over the top and so fun. It, it, it just it just caught me and I was not expecting that the second night. I thought I was going to have to drudge through this thing. And by the end of it, I was cheering. I was like, I want to see more of this. I'm, I watched the whole thing at the end. It's, it's just fantastic. Well, I, I want to say that, Such you know, powerful, the, the, like, so I was going to talk about the piggyback thing too, because I think it's just, it's just an emblematic of the storytelling and what you're saying over, you're like, okay, well, they're, they're really going to do anything in this movie. Um, the scene I keep coming back to is the dance scene. Um, it's about an hour in, uh, I cannot stop. Um, hearing that song nacho nacho in my head i admit i'm singing along in hindi and sometimes a little bit in telugu because if you look for the soundtrack there's five different versions of the song and it's all crazy but uh, i i love the way that they 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 move the story forward they move their relationship forward they showed that the, the the british colonial rule is about things like stealing children and smacking young women in the head with logs but it's also about constant casual humiliation so for them to get to stand up and all those waiters who bowed their heads in shame and the the black drummer who doesn't have a line in the movie but he he lives the full experience of watching these guys and then it ends with what i call Chekhov's piggyback ride because as you said they set it up and it's just it's ridiculous he's carrying him around and i had no idea it was going to pay off the way it was going to pay off and when he as you said when he reached down and he did the bolts for him. I was like, that is as cool as, as Schwarzenegger's flipping his lever action shotgun while he's on the motorcycle no, in uh, Terminator 2. It's just like instantly like, it's just, it's just so cool. The whole movie is so cool. Well, and, what about the, um, the perfume I didn't expect commercial? To love it as much. The, per the perfume commercial uh, horse versus motorcycle ride that they yeah, did? Yeah, that's the bromance. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, ridiculous. Well, they, they had a whole montage of their built body relationship. I do have a question though. Where can. Because obviously, because one distracting thing I did find was all the English speaking actors, you could tell were speaking English and I, I didn't understand and they were dubbed. So is there a version where you yeah. hear what they're actually saying? I, I mean, where is you, that you may have watched the Portuguese dub then. Because yeah, because when, when, John, when I turned it on, right, 
Yeah. And I started watching it. It was obviously subtitled and they were speaking what sounded to me like Spanish, but I'm like, but that's not Spanish. Right. And I actually stopped at about 20 minutes in. And for some reason, Netflix um, defaults to the uh, Brazilian Portuguese version. So not you can the Hindi track. The movie in. must do really well in Brazil. Oh, so if you yeah. if you switch it to the Hindu track, then the English the, the yes. actors are speaking. Oh, English. okay. Yeah, it's I didn't know that. I found also that really English. distracting. I didn't need you that. I just die. was looking at the. I just want to yeah, see the words. No, I would like. Because I know oh, Ray Stevenson, you could see Ray Stevenson was speaking. Yeah, you could. That's what I meant. That's yeah. why I was really looking. Yeah. At. Well, I mean, you got Ray Stevenson. Why would you use his real voice? What's because funny? What's even, funny about that is that the the if you the only version that's available on Netflix is the Hindi dub with the well, English speaking actor speaking English and then other language dubs. The movie's actually Telugu. So when you are watching the movie, you're actually it's the actors are doing their own dubs, but you're actually watching a Hindi language dub over the Telugu. Uh, that's in the movie so either way you're watching something dubbed but i mean when you when you watch more than 20 minutes of the movie and then you realize what you've done oops uh and you figure it out it, it does feel a little bit different and then you can decide if you like the portuguese actors voices better than the um the well i mean i was reading voice. the subtitles anyway so sure. it's not like i was sure. focusing on their voices but i did find that because you could tell stevenson was mouthing the words and it wasn't matching right. the dub right but, you know, i mean you. It, it was it's matter, matching though. the subtitles, but right. not the dub. But it doesn't even matter. I went, that was the I went to Italy. And while I was in Italy, I decided to go to see a movie while I was in Italy because I'm a movie fan. And I saw Gladiator. And I saw, I saw it in Italian. And the person was telling me the tickets like, oh, we show it in English in an hour if you want to wait. And I'm like, no, I'm here to see it in Italian. And the dubbing was so good. It didn't look like dubbing at all. They were all speaking Italian. And... You know, I think they do a crappy job for a lot of films released in this country, you know, like the Godzilla movies or something. But over there, you could just tell, you know, just watching this one movie, the care that went into the dubbing. And, you know, and I was thinking the same thing, too. This is a Hindi movie, but it wasn't, you know, I, I went and switched it because I was trying. I was like, oh, I look, first thing I did was go and try to see what languages it was in. And I'm like... Oh, no English dub version. But then again, half the movie's in English anyway. I didn't, I just, right. it's, for me, it was the music and the visuals were just, just yeah. Yeah. insane. That I mean, scene I can't. where we introduced the policeman and he <laughs> oh, goes, yeah. by the way, one okay. guy. Yeah. yeah. That's, that could be the climax of a movie. Yeah. Okay. So all the, so and they do that disclaimer at the beginning that no animals yeah. were harmed because all the animals were CG. <laughs> were CG, right? yeah. Yeah. Yep. That scene where he's getting tortured. And he sings his song, and that whole crowd starts to mill you're talking about You're talking about when Beam is being whipped? When Beam yeah. is being whipped, yeah. and he's singing mm -hmm. the song, and all the extras, that big crowd scene, those are all real people. Yeah. That is not There's CGI. There's no CGI crowds. It's pretty amazing. I, it just blows my pretty mind. Amazing. And you said this costs $70 million, only $70 million? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the most expensive Indian movie uh, ever made. It, wow. it costs an American $70 million. Film, that it's like, would be 70 million. It's like the next, it's like the third highest grossing Indian movie uh, of all time. That's incredibly um, insane. It's amazing. They put all that it, money on that screen. That wasn't, you know. Well, it's, it's funny because if anybody was going to get this money, it's these these people that made this movie. I mean, this director, S.S. Rajamouli, here, I'll give you an example. Everybody in, in Tollywood and in broader India knows who this guy is. He's made two gigantic movies. And I won't try to pronounce their names, but they are both on Netflix that are, uh, I think, a depiction of the uh, more of the stories of Indian gods. And they're supposed to be uh, spectacular movies. But if you remember, you might not remember because I was didn't know what I was looking at at the time during Shole, which is the song at the end where they're singing and they're showing all the different uh, Indian revolutionary figures. At a certain point, the actors are singing and there's Sita and there's Jenny. And then this guy with gray hair starts singing. And he sings a, a verse or two. That's the director. And like you're like, why? he's not in the movie. Who is this guy? Well, then if you really want to be entertained, go to YouTube and look up theater reaction scenes of people in India watching this movie. Oh, wow. Because it is completely insane and entertaining. Like the clip, which obviously I'm trying to learn that now too, the clip in the dance scene where uh, the, the two guys dance and they do that move where they freeze and their heads go like this, that was released... It's like an eight or 10 second clip before the movie came out. And when that 
scene came on in the movie, all these people started jumping up and dancing it because they've been learning it and practicing the steps. And it's all these things about audiences that would be so annoying to me if they happened, except it's so joyous and it's in the spirit of the movie. And it's just, it's just wonderful. It's delirious. Yeah. And the other, see, the other thing about the movie that I can't speak that much about, and I won't speak that much about as far as what it means, is that you can talk about it as a movie. You can talk about it as a, an expression of modern Indian nationalism, which is controversial. And you can talk about it as um, a depiction of the class system and how it may or may not support that. And uh, I think it's interesting to learn about the imagery of, of Ram and at the end in the big battle when he's wearing the, he's got the bow and arrow and the red outfit and stuff. And that's not only the symbol of the, of the revolutionary who he played, the, the real one in real life, it's also a symbol of, of that God, which has been taken as a symbol of uh, Indian nationalism, which is on the rise. So there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to ex experience it that we just don't know because we're not from that country, we're not from that culture. And I love that that also doesn't take anything away from our experience of it. It's like, yeah, I, know, I, I was wondering it, I throughout, it. you know, I was sitting there the whole time. I, I mean, I absolutely love this movie. And, you know, it's great to find a movie. I mean, I enjoy lots of movies. But it's good to see something that's so out there that it's like seeing movies for the first time again. And that's how I felt watching this movie. And I thought, as much as I like this movie now, how much more would I like it if I understood everything that was going on? <laughs> and also, I think there's a religious aspect, too, because wasn't one of those two characters a Muslim and one a Hindu? Yeah. Well... Beam, Beam are, plays Akhtar. He's pretending. Yeah. He's pretending to be right. a Muslim. He's yeah, undercover he's a, as Akhtar the Muslim. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's not. They're both. They're both. Um, Indian. You know, Telugu Indian. Well, Indian Muslim. Well, yeah. Indian, you know, but Muslim, they're Muslim. both. In but they're back. both uh, on, on the other side of that divide. Yes. But it's also good. It shows harmony between um, the Muslims and the Hindus, which has not been always historically accurate. But um, but it's great. You know, I just that first scene where Ram go, runs out and gets that one person out of this crowd of hundreds. I mean, that scene was absolutely amazing. And you see him really getting beat up. And, and then you yeah, come, come back later with the scene where they catch the tiger. And um, that is absolutely amazing where he's holding it. And, and it's very realistic. I think the special effects with that tiger, you know, that is really well done. Well, you know, it's and three that's of the, the all-time uh it's three of the all-time greatest character introductions that villain you know in that first scene of that movie yeah. is a truly evil person you know exactly who you think rom is as far as his character and his motivation but you also know what he can do like i thought you start watching you think there's going to be some part of that that fight in the crowd where he like gets piled on and then he throws them all off like a superhero or something but he doesn't he just fights his way out i mean he's still acting like a superhero in the sense that he can do this and and all that sort of stuff but you get a sense of him and then beam is roaring back at a tiger you know exactly who he is i mean for a three-hour movie i think the script is actually really very economical and efficient because it delivers so much so quickly and though i know i missed things because i'm not of that cultural background i'm not of indian heritage i didn't miss anything as far as what was happening in the movie and i didn't miss anything as far as the storytelling and the twists and the turns and the emotional um melodrama i mean my god to see him like you said whipped and then he starts singing uh, there's an awful lot of resonance in that historically that I didn't see, but God damn. I mean, like it was just so moving and incredible. And that's sort of the ridiculous thing. It should, why does that work? It shouldn't work. And it all works. The whole thing. Works. Yeah. And you know what, you know what scene I love? I love the venomous snake scene and who would mm -hmm. ever think that that would be the out, you know, for him to get out. And it was just so fantastic. That little, little part of that movie to just, just show you how inventive they they were to, to to create such a line to get out of this situation that was great another it's thing i clever. liked uh, about the uh, the culture and i know we've all seen this with with a, a person from india they always go like this when they're talking romantically or talking about relationships um the not so handsome one <laughs> Uh, Stop calling Beam that. NTR Jr. Beam, is a big Beam. movie star. Oh, Settle down. Him. He's handsome. But he was a manly He's star. Just they were two handsome. different handsomes because uh, Beam True. was more masculine and the other one was more, oh my gosh, Brad Pitty. 
you know, what that's if there's fair. such a word. But um, yeah, I just love that part where they're, they shake their head back and forth. I love that about the culture. What amazing well, that's, charisma between those guys too. Yeah. That's that, that I saw an interview with, um, with the director uh, and he was talking about that sort of thing. And it, when you're seeing the scenes where the Indian characters are dealing with the British colonials who are, I mean, they're the villains in the movie, but that they're also part of a genuinely evil endeavor in history. And um, that that head bob thing that they do deliberately in that scene before they start dancing is is kind of playing into what the British would expect of them. So they, yeah. they do the little thing. It's just like, oh, that that's what these people who are beneath me do, that sort of thing, which is why the, the fact that they found the courage, which, I mean, the, the dancing started because Rom stopped Beam from being humiliated. When we already know Beam fights tigers, like he doesn't have to put up with that. But you have to know your place in order to stay safe until it's time to get the guns and load, aim, and shoot, and 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 really go to war. And, of course, like I don't remember which one of you guys said it. That's not even how they won. Like I feel yeah. like... If this was an American movie, there'd be some little thing at the end where some little Indian kid with gla with round glasses looks at it and goes, I don't know if that's going to work. And his parents <laughs> yeah. are like, come on, Mahatma, let's get out of here. You know, like it was <laughs> it was just all. Yeah, it was just all Mahatma it was just all crazy. It was all crazy. This was a um, fantastic movie. I, I should say this is this is a excellent film. Excellent. Yep. We I would never think to watch it. But it was beautiful. That's why I like this series that's, that's true. that we're doing on this podcast. And if you like it too, you should subscribe and hit the uh, notifications button. You know, I'm just telling you, you yeah, really yeah, should. I would suggest and you should uh, watch this movie. Oh my gosh, hit the really like different. button. Most of our people on this one don't do that still. But yeah, hit the like. <laughs> And then you'll I'd get slam it, slam it. I'd slam, slam it. I'd slam the like. Well, you know what's slam. unusual? Last mo last week uh, movie, everybody liked it, and the same for this one, everybody liked it. And these are movies we hadn't seen. Yeah. Well, this this well, fortunately movie was... I brought one that m most people didn't like. <laughs> Thank well, this, God. This movie was this movie was in the theaters earlier this year. I am so sorry that I missed it. I would have loved to have seen it yeah, on the big screen. Well, here's the, here's the thing. I remember I watched this movie and I said, I know what I want to happen. I want this movie to be nominated for Best Foreign Language Film. I want this movie to be nominated for Best Picture. And I really want, because I looked it up to make sure it was an original song, I really want Nacho Nacho or Nacho Nacho to be nominated for Best Original Song because then they'll have to perform it at the Oscars. And that would just be so completely ridiculous. And That's I have breaking news. I have breaking news from Variety just a few hours ago. The uh, Indian, uh, the, the the nation has put forward the movie that they want to be on the short list for the uh, Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and it is not RRR. So people in India are freaking out. They said this is not right, and now apparently all the critics and people in India, and I'm sure this will be around the world as well, they're saying just vote for it and everything else. Vote for it and everything else because... I mean, everything about this movie is just world class craziness. So I hope that it uh, it gets that kind of attention. I see. If it does, they'll probably put it back out in the theater, and then we can Andrew, go see it in IMAX. Objection? They what's the what? What's the objection that this isn't, this isn't the movie? R R R. Well, the objection is that another movie was selected, and I've never heard of that movie, and I don't know what goes into their decision. But you know, there's always if you if you see two French movies in a year that you love, only one of them, if either of them, is going to be on the list. There's all sorts of politics and all sorts of different things. Right, right. But RRR, I hope, will be up for Oscars just because again, it will get attention and it will get a re-release. And I would well, let me ask on, on the Oscars, who votes for the foreign film? Is it the American? Is it us? Is it the it's Academy us, yeah. that votes? But everyone has yeah. to see them, I believe. I yeah, understand. you have to, so you have to see I mean. all if five of the nominees. If you're expecting the this Academy to watch a three-hour Indian film, I, I don't see that happening. I, I would say that, will. except the, one. the buzz. Yeah, the buzz on this movie is completely crazy. Look, look up I, any I, I don't random disagree. podcast I think that deserves... you like, and you will see people raving about it, and it, the yeah. word is out. So yeah. we'll see. I, yeah, I can see that. So. All right. Well, I think this is all yippee ki yay for everybody, right? This is a, a hit all it's around. It's amazing to see a film like this. Yeah, and I'm I so bet glad you guys like the American movies in these actors' futures too. Yeah, that dance. There's a meme out with that dance scene. That dance scene is insane. Now I know it's sped up. I know that they they they. No, it, it isn't. 
Yeah. No, it, no, it no, is. no. It isn't. It has. No, to. it isn't. Those it, those guys those guys are as you would be in in, in the Indian film industry are excellent dancers as well as everything. I else. understand, but, but I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna take a swing here and say that that was sped up in some way to give it even more of it's, that phonetic. I don't feel. think. I maybe, don't think maybe it I'm is wrong, because but well, the director Ralph. the director said it. The, the, those guys picked up the choreography very quickly uh, because they're excellent I, I dancers. Think they, I but think the they hard under, part they they undercranked well, the hard, film. The they hard part was getting them to do it. Did you it guys get sync. the? Um, did you guys notice this? It was Debbie Reynolds. Um, who the other two and um, Debbie Reynolds? Oh, uh, you know, Jean Jean Kelly, Jean and, Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Donald O'Connor. That's what two she was. Indian guys and in, in the um the little oh. <laughs> I, I saw that. I, it was like wow. Now I Ralph, didn't, but now that you now that you mention it, yeah, I guess. Yeah. What, you what know, Sean? If they started singing like most Moses, Moses supposes. supposes his toes is a roses, yeah, that would have been funny. Yeah. This is a musical. This was a good I could watch this dance musical all day long. Yeah. yeah. And, and the whole thing was a music. The whole thing was just unreal just unbelievable that that you talk about that bridge scene we barely talked about it where they swing off yeah. either side of the thing <laughs> and he dips the flag in the water so the guy oh, can wrap the flag so he doesn't get burned talk I about mean, every scene in this movie it's, it's crazy it's like i know you, and you want even. to know something this movie what it meant for me i'm going through some difficult times here but when i watched this movie and i just found so much joy in it that's and, the right word and it just went right to my heart and it just oh. in so many ways it, it just really kind of was healing you know for me wonderful it was just and i appreciate the podcast and you guys because it's really a wonderful thing to go through stuff in life difficult things but movies can really make you make it through make it that you can get through it and not only that we got some hot dogs and whiskey. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> that helps whiskey too. Whiskey always helps. Never hurts. All right. Well, that's great. That's good. Debbie had a great reaction. That's a nice emotional feeling. That's that's good. So this is uh, other than places in the heart. I think we had some pretty good films here. Places yeah. in the heart. Although I places felt the same way Debbie did about her, this Indian film as I did about places in the heart. That one got me right. Yeah. Oh yeah. There, places somewhere. It was right one there. from the heart. Yeah, it's one from the heart. Right? I, I but, no, I like places. Are oh, you doing in the that purposely? Too, but <laughs> I, I meant one from the heart. That's a Sally Field. That's a Sally Field. Yeah, I get it. Fields. That's why I'm in love with Good Sally Field still to this day. Places in the heart. Yeah, I did say that. Thank you. You did twice. Twice. All right. So I guess we'll continue this for another round of. uh movies that oh, you yeah. haven't seen so are you going to spin the wheel now yeah i'm going to see if i can spin the wheel i'm having some technical difficulties but i do well, we, might have, we, have might, to, we might be do doing the, a guest star next week right i, I think, think we sean might. has somebody coming page. in right yeah i think so do the movies but, do the movies that we pick have to be a minimum of three hours i don't think they have to but that's what we've been doing <laughs> we so i want to make sure just imagine the three year the oh. three hour version of one from the heart i oh. haven't but i haven't seen Showa, so that might be coming up Show. That's what that, eight that's hours. That's a good right? eleven hours or whatever. Yeah, eleven yeah. hours. Um, I well, like if the my, listen, cut, it's fifteen. Honestly, if Zach Kreger, if I get in touch with him and he wants to go, he's uh, right I'm gonna, on. I'm going to move move things to make that happen. So, okay. Yeah, well, we'll have to see Barbarian first. Well, that's right. Well, I'll let you know I, if I find like out. I'll let it. you guys know. Yeah, all right. You should check it out anyway. It's great. It's actually, yeah, no, it's on my list. It looks great. You guys, seeing that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Wait, I don't see Drew on there. Yeah. Can I can I drop Drew off again? Yeah, Drew no, wasn't on. Do. You he make the Holocaust jokes. This is how, this you is how the, the last off the one wheel. started. Oh, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna take two. No, no that. cheating. I we had to drop Drew. Hey, on. let's spin that I wheel. Wanna, I want to watch Debbie chug that whiskey or whatever she's drinking. Go ahead, Debbie. <laughs> do that on camera. Her, her right. cheeks will look. Her cheeks will looking joyous right. right now. See if I can oh, that's do this rosacea. again. I might be getting to. Yep. Everybody's on now. Ah, Chris got hosed. That happens. That happened the last time. All right, so Sean, you got oh. another one. Yeah. You gotta Across make up the for, Pacific. You no, got to make kidding. up for places in the heart. <laughs> I know it's not places in the heart. Oh, my I God. I know, because I've seen that one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's early John Malkovich, too. Places in the heart. Yeah. He plays the blind Playing guy. the blind man. Yeah, he's really good. All right, so. I um, notice that. Yeah, everybody stay safe. Um, let's. Uh, We'll see what happens with guests. Sean, you might have a guest coming as well. Yeah, might have too, but we'll do this okay. one first. I'll let you know about Zach Kreger. See what happens. Hopefully he'll come on. He may not, but
but uh, his brother said he does a lot of the Reddit stuff with fans, so he might be he might come on. It so are we? Um, are we off the air? What's that? Was <laughs> remembering him? Are we off the air? No, Sean, we're still doing the show. Oh. Where have you been? Oh, are we live, Ralph? Are we? Are we what on is, right now? What, what just happened? Okay. I don't know what we'll I'm saying. Live. Should we be telling too much of the internal mechanism Sean. to the audience? Sean, are you you always end the show with. Here comes the music, so we're all doing it. <laughs> okay, good. That's all right, bad. so everybody have a good week. We'll see you next week, all right? I'll let you know if we get a guest. All right, have a good week. There's the music. And I'm Drew Gould. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God.